Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Dwarf Fortress. So, when we last left our fort, we were starting to get our military underway. Huzzah! Finally, it's only taken us way too long. Alright, so, there's a few problems with our current military setup. And if we switch over to Dwarf Therapist, it will probably tell us what they are. So, if you see, we have this equipment column, and on all of our military dwarfs, it's blue. Well, what does that mean? Let's hover over it. It will say that we are missing things. For instance, in this case, we are missing a flask and a backpack. Well, there's another problem that I've just noticed here. See, last episode, we went ahead and we assigned, or we created a uniform, but we never actually assigned it to the squad. So let's go ahead and do that now. So we press P for positions, E for equipment, then we want to press Shift U for uni uniform assignment, move it down to highlight March Dwarves, and then press Shift and Enter to tell all the March Dwarves that that is going to be their equipment. So we're going to go ahead and let the game run for a couple moments just to let that propagate through the Dwarves. Okay, and then we're going to read the Dwarves over here. Now this should tell us what I was actually expecting it to tell us in the first place. And that is, we are missing, nope, it's still not working for me. Why are you unhappy? Complain of the lack of well recently. Well, get, to, get over yourself. Actually, we have a lot of people unhappy. That might be something to, to look into real quick before I continue any further. Uh, is this, this been made a dormitory, right? Uh, or did I forget to do that? I forgot to make this a dormitory. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. So we built this, this little area as kind of a sleeping room for dwarves that don't have a proper bedroom. Which is, unfortunately, right now a lot of dwarves just because we have been neglecting getting more bedrooms built. It will be a, that will be a problem that we fix pretty soon. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and make this a dormitory. So we press R to make it a room, highlight the entire area that will be the dormitory, enter, and then we press D to tell the dwarves that this is where they go to sleep if they don't have a proper room. That should hopefully take care of a lot of that problem. We should probably construct a well soon as well, but that's going to be a bit of a major undertaking. And I'd much rather get our fortress, uh, our fortress's defense taken care of first. So, our next step will be to actually get the, um, let the game run for a few more minutes and read the dwarves, because we should here soon see that they are missing. Oh, we do have some quivers. Okay, maybe that is not going to be as big of a problem as I thought. Okay, here we go. Now we're starting to miss uh, flask, crossbow, backpack. Crossbow, backpack. I'm not seeing quivers being missed anywhere. Anyway, the thing I was trying to drive at is that we were going to be missing quivers. Uh, they have just not updated their equipment properly yet. And a lot of people do have quivers because we had a few. So, we want to start making some quivers. So, let's go ahead and expand this a little bit because we can make them out of leather. But we can also, I believe, make them out of cloth. Which seems like it'd be a little better. Um, oh, we have a missing weaver. Interesting. Do we have some special fun going on in this fort? Or was were they just murdered and I just didn't notice? Or it's entirely possible that they were under a bridge when I, pre when I threw the lever and got killed. Either way. So build workshops. We want a clothers shop. And we're going to go ahead and build that right here. I'm not actually sure if we can build these out of cloth or not, but I saw a cotton quiver there, and that sounds to me a lot like it's, um... <laughs> I have a wondrous invention idea. <laughs> All right, we have another dwarf with an idea. Oh, oh, oh. All right, so we have some special fun going on in this fortress, which is actually a little bit unfortunate. I was hoping to deal with some other stuff before we got to anything like this. So that weaver that was missing has been found. And he's been found dead, completely drained of his blood. What that means is that we have a vampire in the fort. And unfortunately, catching them can be a bit of a pain in the butt. So, how do we want to go about catching a vampire? Do we want to catch them right now? Well, actually, no. I mean, they're going to kill off a couple of dwarves, and hopefully they won't get anybody important. But... We don't want to catch it if we're not ready to deal with it. So we're actually just going to go ahead and let him carry on as he was for the time being. We will eventually need something to detect him, though, and we will get to that fairly shortly. So hopefully we have a this crazy dwarf claiming a workshop here. Or did he just go down to the dining room? Uh, where's the crazy dwarf? 
I can't do that there. I saw him take off. Where'd he go? Oh, there he is. He's in the meeting area. All right, so what type of workshop do you need? He's a gem cutter, so he'll want a gem cutting workshop. That is perfectly fine. We're just going to build one of those in the hallway for now just to so he has, you know, the workshop that he needs to do his mood um, because I don't want to set up the actual room for it just yet. Now that we have the closure shop, let's see if we can't make uh, the cloth. No nope, cloth bag. I'm guessing cotton quivers are not something that we can actually make here. I'm thinking we have to make those out of leather. Yep. Okay. That's kind of what I thought, but I I saw the cotton quiver and I wanted to double check. So it turns out that we can't actually make them. So let's go ahead and we're going to set up a our leather and cloth stockpile here since it's high time that we did. Bam. All right. Now what we want to do is leather works. We want to go into here. We want to go down to quiver, which is right near the very bottom. Set that on repeat, set up a workflow for it, quiver of any material, and we want to keep one to three in stock at all times. That will ensure that we always have Why one ready to go. This? So we'll have our jeweler's workshop set up here soon. Now, unfortunately, the person that died was a weaver, so it's entirely possible that we, in fact, do not have a, uh, you know, leather worker, weaver, that kind of dwarf. It looks like we actually do. All right, so that works out fine. She's just drinking right now. So she'll get to that pretty soon. Okay, so he's going ahead and clean that workshop. Perfect. So, uh, oh, wow, that was a fairly quick one, too. Okay, so now we're making leather quivers. So that'll ensure that we have that taken care of. The next thing we need is ammo. And we're going to want really two types of ammo. We're going to want some training ammo, which will be made out of wooden bolts, which we can make in the, not the Bower's Workshop, but the Craft Dwarf's Workshop. So build, wooden, and we want wooden, uh, make sure you select bolts, not arrows. So if I expand this a little bit, we have arrows here. Arrows are near the top. No, we don't want arrows. What did I just say? We want bolts. And really build any type of bolt that you want. Uh, it's handy to have something that's comp that's combat capable so you'd want one, either a broadhead piercing or a hammerhead bolt uh, I am kind of preferable to the broadhead bolts so we're going to make up some of those and we're gonna want a lot of these so let's go ahead and make once we hit a thousand we want to make up to 1500 now they get oops they get made in stacks of 25 so that isn't as big as it seems but it's still fairly large we want to make sure that every dwarf in our marks dwarf army has plenty of ammo to fire at the enemy. Now, the other type of bolt that we're going to want is we're going to want a bolt for combat. And what we want to make that out of is metals, essentially. We want something that is going to be decent at punching through armor or, you know, doing damage at the very least. And for that... Sir, an artifact has been completed. Oh, cool. We made a uh, new artifact. Let's go see it. Let's see. Yep, you're now a Grandmaster Gem Cutter. That's actually really handy. We'll have to use you later. Let's take a look at our new artifact, shall we? It's A. This is a perfect rose quartz. All craftsmanship, craft dwarf ship is of the highest quality. It encrusted with oval rose quartz cabochons. Okay, so not very exciting, but it's nice to have the legendary gem crafter, or gem cutter, I should say. So, as I was saying, we want to make our bolts out of metal. Now, I will probably start with copper on this map just because it's what I have a lot of, or at least while well, I did. Looks like I might not actually have as much copper as I thought. So, what we should we do? What should we be doing now? We should be mining. So let's go ahead and do some exploratory mining, and we're just gonna go down a couple more levels, go a little deeper, see if we can't maybe find something a bit more interesting. Maybe we'll even find some iron, though I doubt it. So dig down a little bit. All right. Now, there's a few different ways that we can go about, um, you know, doing exploratory mining. There are entire articles about, like, exploratory mining. Um, and you can get really fancy with it. There are some DF hack scripts that can help you with, out with that. For right now, we're just going to stick to a simple, um, a simple line going from the stairwell all the way to one side and see if our dwarf finds anything. This is not the most efficient way to do it, but it is... Uh, 
it will be good enough for our purposes. Hello. Ooh, we have Blood of Armok. That's actually a really rare... Well, I shouldn't say really rare. A fairly rare and fairly um, powerful gem to have. Because what that allows us to do with the right reactions is we can turn that into um, basically an infinite source of magma. Wait. Oh, sweet. We do have iron. All right, never mind. Let's go ahead and start mining. Have we had iron this entire time and I've just been an idiot? Or was that a fairly recent discovery? That's Malice right there. That's Tumas Coal. Have we had iron this entire time? I don't think so. It doesn't look like it. This is not the texture pack I normally play with, and truth be told, I probably won't be playing with it again after this. Not a massive fan, won't lie, but I'm not going to change it anymore again. All right, so it looks like this is our only source of iron, but that's really freaking handy. Oh, it looks like it's not very much, though. Which is a bit of a shame, but oh well. It's iron. I mean, heck, if uh, we can go straight to iron ammunition and not have to do all the iron buying and stuff that I was doing. I mean, I'm glad I did it because it yeah, shows that, that just again. because you have a fort that doesn't have all the resources you want doesn't mean it's a impossible fort. It just means you need to work a little harder at it. There we go. That's the type of iron deposit I was looking for. All right, so we are actually going to make... How do we want to go right to steel ammunition? I think we do. That sounds like fun to me. Basically, the way that the ammunition metal works, though, is... You can probably make it out of something a little less valuable than It'll steel. Work. Um, you don't necessarily have to make it out of... Uh, that is hematite, right? Okay. We want to go ahead and add that, actually, here. But anyway, you can you can make it out of less valuable material than than steel and probably be okay. Uh, but the more valuable... The more... I shouldn't say the more valuable. That doesn't make sense. That doesn't work because by that logic, you can make golden bolts and they'll be amazing. No. Um, you can... Make it out of, um, you know, like copper. Copper is not a very good weapons-grade material, but it is a weapons-grade material, and it will work for bolts. Um, you know, bronze is a little better. Uh, steel is really good. So if you have access to a ton of steel, like we will, because we do have hematite on this map, and it looks like it's fairly, we will have a fair amount, we can start turning that into steel crossbow bolts that we can use against the enemy. We're not going to be training with those, because that would be dumb. Um, we don't want to waste that much steel. But... With what we have, we should be okay. So let's go ahead and get our forges and stuff working Sorry, on the hematite. And we'll have to wait for them to actually process some of it before we can do the next step. So, sorry to get sidetracked here, but it's actually a really big find to find uh, hematite on this map. Makes things a lot easier Spring for us. Is here. Wait for the save to go by. All right. So we're going to go let our miners go ahead and take care of mining out all that iron for us. And we're going to get our metalsmith's forge working on some weapon grade steel. And we want steel... Uh, broadhead bolts. And we want to uh, control W on those. Range, broadhead bolt of any steel. And we want to uh, keep in stock. Uh, we want to go up to 1,000. Actually, when we hit 800, go to 1,000. It's a little on the low side for our um, you know, ammo, but we also don't want to use up all of our steel on ammunition right now either so I think that's a good way to, to go about doing it which means we're going to basically be focusing on range defenses which means we need to start working on things to keep the you know vile hordes of darkness at bay and to do that that's when these walls are going to come in so how is our block uh, situation coming along eh, getting a lot better getting a lot better though they're still working on it so let's go ahead and start building our, oh, you know what? We should probably also build a coffin here soon for the dead dwarf, but we'll deal with that shortly. So let's go ahead and get a wall built. 
again, as I was saying last episode, I want to make sure I encapsulate this stream and have enough room to keep the animals grazing. We really don't need much more than that to start with. So we're going to go out to here. And we're going to make this out of nice blocks and shale blocks. Hmm, pardon me. We're going to go ahead and let them build that wall. And as they do, we are going to... Uh, actually, we want to shrink this zone. And then we want to... Uh, make it a little bigger by extending it about to here. Nope, about to here. There we go. Oh, shoot. That makes two separate zones, right? All right, so we're just going to remove the whole damn zone, and then we'll recreate it. So, about to here. And, and then we're just going to, as I said, remove all the currently pastured and non-grazing. And then we just add everybody in the list. There we go. All right, and then we just need to wait for our masons to take care of this. What I'm actually going to do, because if we just, we only have a few masons, right? And if we wait for them to take care of it, this wall is going to take forever. So what I'm actually going to do, come down here. We want our stone crafter to make us a rock coffin. Let's go ahead and do that. Since we're not really doing any massive, um, you know, super important work with our masons, we're actually going to turn on masonry for all of our slaves. So that, that that way, our general workers can take care of building that wall and it'll get built right quick. So what we want to do is sort by profession, go down to slave, select do everybody, and turn on masonry. Like so. And that will have a lot more workers building that wall for us. And it'll get built a lot quicker. So, how are we going doing down here? So, it looks like we're getting plenty of iron, which is good. I'm actually going to remove building the uh, copper battle axes for right now. Because now that we've discovered the iron, we really don't need to be doing what we were doing with the copper. I can't do it! Let's go down here and see how the mining is going. Almost done with what we've found so far. So, we're going to do another exploratory mine shaft. All the way up here and see if we can't find some more. Because I am iron hungry. That actually reminds me, I should probably get on this stockpile here. Should probably allow some wheelbarrows. And on that token, I should actually maybe get some wheelbarrows built. So let's go here. Wood. Wheelbarrows. Oh wait, no, that's not the right workshop, is it? I want a carpenter's workshop. Wood oven, bowers. I don't have a carpenter's workshop. Uh-oh. Uh, a giant humanoid monster with a single eye set in his forehead. So we have a Cyclops on our map, which is unfortunate, which makes sure that our merchant's gate is closed, which it is not. So let's go ahead and do that first. So we want the inner merchant gate. We're going to go ahead and pull the lever. Unfortunately, he showed up a little bit earlier than I was hoping. How is our military doing as far as having ammunition, or having, uh, you know, the stuff they need to fight is concerned. We have a lot of really unhappy dwarves here. Let's find the lowest unhappiness and find out why. Why are you so unhappy? Lost a spouse to tragedy, endure the decay of a... T oh, okay. Yeah, we need, really need to get that um, coffin built here shortly. Why are you guys unhappy? Slept out of the proper room. All right, I'm working on it, I'm working on it. How's everybody doing as far as need, getting everything they need? You still need a crossbow. Why haven't you picked up a crossbow yet? Uh, you still need a crossbow. Three, four, like four people that still need crossbows. How come we don't have those crossbows built yet? Oh, okay, they're being made now, I guess. That's fine, then. However, we need to take care of this problem now. Unfortunately, we don't have the proper defenses built. Which means that we either need to basically let him destroy all of our animals and just kind of try to recover from that, which is not necessarily the wrong choice, but I think we might be able to actually, you know, fight this guy off. Provided we've actually built some ammunition. How are we doing on ammunition? Never mind, we don't stand a chance. So, let's go ahead, close the top off, the top of the world off from, you know, 
the Cyclops, and then we'll let him rampage around. Maybe uh, maybe somebody will manage to kill him, or maybe we'll be out of animals. Either way. So I want to go ahead and remove this guy from this uh, zone first, because we don't want to lose him if we don't have to. So let's remove him from there. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to set up a order to force all civilians back inside the fort. And this is a good uh, thing to set up for emergencies, such as an enemy showing up you're not prepared to deal with. So what we want to do, press W to enter your burrow mode. Press A to add a new burrow. Enter to edit the burrow. We'll just change the name to home by pressing N. All right. Now what, all we do, we're going to turn the mouse selection on because this makes this part really easy, is we want to start telling dwarves what area is considered home. And we do that by just clicking and dragging out, and we'll see that flashing blue, and that means it's considered part of the home area. There's a number of use for burrows, but this tends to be the, the one I use the most, and that is basically to force everybody inside so that I can close up the fort should things go badly for us. Come on, everything. What is that there? That's uh, actually fine for you guys to be in. But no further than that. All right. Down here, this is all fine. The bedrooms are, of course, all fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Just because I don't want to disrupt our mining operation. And this entire floor is fine. There we go. Oh, I said this entire floor. There we go. All right, so now that the burrow has been set up, what we do is we go into military by pressing M. We go into alerts by pressing A. And what we want to do is move down to active and training, then move over to home and press enter. And what that means is if when we set the civilian population to active, they cannot venture outside of the home burrow. So when we do that, if we go up top, we can see that everybody's going to start running inside. They'll cancel jobs, do whatever it takes, but they're just going to get inside. Here comes the Cyclops. And, okay, that's about as long as we can wait. He's pretty fast. So now what we want to do is we want to go down here to our lever room, and we want to close up that main gate. And that should... Oops, hello. Okay, he's fighting the... Or maybe the Tusk Oxes. All right, never mind. So the tuck tux Oxes just made all the dwarves look like complete and total wimps because they just obliterated that, uh, that Cyclops. Let's see what actually happened there. Okay, so he attacked the Mountain Tusk Ox, but she jumped away. Then the Tusk Ox gores the Cyclops in the eyelid with her left tusk, and the severed part sails off in an arc. So in the opening blows, this Tusk Ox rips the Cyclops' eyelid off. Um... Then the other or then the other Tusk attacks again, or maybe it's the same one. It's hard to tell. Uh, attacks, but the Cyclops jumps away. Then the Cyclops charges at the Tusk Ox, uh, but she misses. Uh, then the she charges again and hits the Tusk Ox is knocked over. Uh, then she gra then the Cyclops grabs the Tusk Ox by the tongue with her right hand, um, and then punches it in the left rear upper leg with her right hand, bruising the muscle. Uh huh. All right. Then she tries to hit two more times, but misses. Then Mountain Tusk Ox charges at the Cyclops and hits it in the right arm with the right horn, bruising the muscle. The uh they tangle and fall over. Then the Tusk Ox slams the Cyclops in the left thigh from behind with a right horn, bruising the muscle, and then slams the Cyclops in the head from behind with a right horn, bruising the muscle and bruising the brain, which is ultimately what would have killed it. That's actually freaking amazing. All right, so, but it's good to, to have, you know, an emergency drill every now and again, and it just shows kind of what issues can come from not having your defenses set up early enough, like we do on this fort. As I said, though, that's all dealable. Um, when something like that attacks, most of your animals will scatter, but if you have tusk oxes, tusk ox oxes are kind of badass, as you, can, as you plainly saw there. Okay, so let's go ahead and return civilians to their regular everyday lives. And all we do is just go back and set them to inactive. And we just have to go here and unsuspend these jobs that got cancelled when they were all told that they weren't allowed to be on the surface anymore. 
Hopefully, oops, we also need to open the gate. So let's go ahead and pull that lever. And with that, let's actually get another, um, let's get our Mastiff set back up near the front. So no females. And we just want the first Mastiff on the list. And he can be set up there. He'll still protect our fort from any invaders, uh, but he'll also be behind this drawbridge in case we have to, you know, close it up again. Or did I have a War Mastiff? I can't remember if I trained one up or not yet. I don't think so. I don't think I've covered that yet. All right. So that was a rather interesting diversion. How goes the forging of our... Oh, we still don't have any broadhead bolts. Really? All this time? Oh, no. Okay. We just don't have a uh, stockpile for them. Setting... Oh, okay. We have a stockpile for them. They just haven't been moved there. Either way. Let's go ahead and... How are these coming? According to this, we have zero, but... Uh, do we actually have zero? What are you carrying? What do you have in your inventory? I want to see what's in that bin. Nothing, apparently. Why are we not building these? Oh, you know what? Probably because I don't have a wood crafter. Bet you that's it. Uh, let's see here. Where are, is the wood crafter? There it is. Yeah, I don't actually have a wood crafter turned on. That would be why. So who's our best wood crafter? We have you, but you're our smith, so we're not going to let you do it. You can do it. What is your regular job? You're a mechanic. Ah, now you're also a wood crafter, I guess. We'll have to get a proper uh, setup going as far as gold and whatnot goes to actually get people in guilds. And that'll have to happen fairly soon because... Uh, guilds, I, I will admit, in the beginning of this series, I severely underestimated. Um, that's one of, one of the great things about the series so far, I have to say, is uh, I'm learning as much from other people commenting on my videos as I'm sure you guys are learning from me. Or maybe I'm learning more. That wouldn't surprise me either. Either way. Uh, so, what do we got here? Yeah, so that should get our bolts being made so that we can actually, you know, fight things off again should they come for a visit. How is the mining going? Have we struck any more hematites? Uh, not yet. Looks like it might actually be only in kind of one area. Let's go ahead and build another exploratory, uh, exploratory mining tunnel. Let's just get that down here and out to here. Oops. And make sure that we actually hook it up to the regular tunnel. Now, unfortunately, these one-wide tunnels are not exactly optimal for moving, but I don't exactly plan to have people moving in them very often, so it kind of works out. Oh, we have more malachite. whoop de doo there. Come on, I want hematite. Give me iron. Give me iron. All right, uh, I bet you that wall's been built on the surface, so let's go ahead and build the next section of it. And we're going to build probably up and around this little lake area here, right? So we're going to, say, build to here. And we want to make that out of shale blocks. So let's uh, give them the time that they need to build that next section of wall. You could build it all in one go, but I find it better just to give them one section at a time. And that way you don't confuse them. That and you don't run into like any corner building problems. We also probably need to think about, you know, adding a door here. So let's go ahead and add that just right here. So we're going to build a door here and it's just going to be a regular drawbridge. Nothing fancy there, something that we've already covered before. And we want to make that out of blocks just to make the construction a little quicker. All right, so there's the beginning of our topside defense. This is a giant security hole right over here. Unfortunately, not a lot we can do just yet about that because I don't think we can build anything over it. Is that coffin made? Because I'd really like to get that bar that dead body kind of out of the way. I think it might be. All right, where is, it gonna be? Where is our Hall of Heroes going to be? We'll do it right over here. So let's just make a little hallway like that. Let them mine that out. And then we're just basically going to do rows of coffins as people die. So build burial receptacle right there. Nice coffin. That should get built pretty quick. Oh, do we have miasma coming up here? What's, that? What's coming up? Do we have another dead dwarf? Did that vampire gets somebody else. I don't see anybody yet. Hmm. All right. Anyway, we're going to set this to for burial. We'll have to catch that uh, damn vampire here soon. Yeah, I definitely see more miasma. Where is this coming from? Is 
definitely have something rotting. Ach, make more room. Here comes migrants. Ah, cool. So we have another migrant wave coming in. All right, guys. So that is going to be where I end this episode, unfortunately. Um, getting our military set up, just getting their ammo and other requirements built for them, and building them the wall that our ranged military needs to succeed. So next episode, we will be covering basically how to set up fortifications that we can shoot from. Uh, and then that way, if we get attacked by a Cyclops again, we can just, you know, shoot it from the walls and not have to worry about it. So thank you guys very much for, for watching this. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I will do my best to answer every single one. And thank you very much for watching. So long.